Okay, again, um, welcome to the the next lecture of uh, the Linux uh, programming and scripting. Today we are going to continue our discussion on Perl. Um, we have seen some introduction to Perl. We introduced some um, uh, data types. We went uh, into an in-depth analysis of the scalar data type um, and a few um, uh, control structures that we talked about. Um, so uh, let's uh, just do a recap of what we discussed um, last time. We also talked about some operators. We already covered the operator precedence. Um, I hope uh, you remember the precedence table. Um, because that will be used uh, in all the lectures going forward. Uh, so just keep in mind. Anyway, let's talk about that. Uh, so in the last lecture, we covered uh, the auto increment and the auto decrement uh, commands, uh, which are these plus signs, um, the double plus signs. And we also like saw some differences between uh, to put the plus first or towards the end. Uh, we also saw the auto decrement, which is actually the negative commands. Uh, and again, we saw like how they, they can be uh, written in Perl and how various things will be interpreted differently. We also talked about uh, the chop and the chomp commands. Uh, the chomp command is a command that you it is uh, used to remove the new line character from the words um, essentially. Um, we saw that uh, and then we took uh, several examples as to how to use the chomp function. Um, which is pr pretty much like I mean used everywhere today like I mean as soon as you read the command read the, any line from a file you want to chomp and get rid of the, the new line characters at the end. Uh, then we talked about some of the scalar interpolation basically like once you have a scalar variable how it is interpolated within a command within a print statement inside Perl. Um, we will we will talk about talk more details about this um, in the next uh, uh, slide. Um, we also talked about the STDIN and what how that functions. We briefly looked at this uh, dollar slash as a delimiter basically, and then um, how we can um, use it to read multiple lines from a file or multiple lines uh, from a standard in um, input. And then finally, we also saw this undef um, essentially. So I'm going to actually take uh, some more details about uh, these three. Like I mean, just uh, what we talked about last time. Um, in case um, the last time, what we say, what we bring the uh, So let's look at the interpolation of the scalar variables. Mainly, we talked about the rules governing this. Um, the variable interpolation occurs inside a double quoted string, essentially. So this is one of the differences that we saw in the previous lecture. Where uh, if the single the difference between a single quote and a double quote, um, and if the variable has not been assigned a value, um, then the variable is uh, replaced with an empty string. So that's another key differentiation essentially or a key way to distinguish. So um, the program will not generate an error. Instead, um, it will basically replace uh, the uh, the unassigned uh, value with um, with an empty string. Uh, one other thing is like there is no double substitution, meaning um, you cannot substitute once and then um, have that as an another variable so that you can substitute it again. So it is only one time use essentially. So uh, that's another thing. Um, then in case like I mean you're uh, you you have um, uh, letters basically uh, that are continuous and then part of it denote a variable then you can use these uh, the, the brackets essentially uh, to separate the variable from the surrounding text. Uh, this will be more apparent when I talk about, talk about this next rule which is right here um, which is the longest possible name will be used as a variable in a string. Um, so if you say like okay you know my name on IR and then you put a dollar this whole thing is treated as just one variable at this point 
um say like i mean you want to actually the variable is um, dollar anand and then there is ir is just uh, some set of uh, text basically to denote this you may want to put the parenthesis here so that it knows that okay dollar anand is one variable and ir is all the surrounding text um so so you can now see like i mean the how this rule will be applied and basically why these two rules uh, rules go hand in hand so the other thing that we talked about was the stdin um every time we you we use a standard in in place of a scalar expected the perl reads the next line from standard in so um the um, essentially um, we can uh, ask it to read this uh, any any amount of text from the terminal by just using the standard in uh, one thing to note he here is the line read includes the new line character so if you want to remove the new line character you will do a standard in and then you need to do a chop to get rid of the new, the new line character um and then the default std in uh, even though like i mean you can see that this is actually a, a file handle uh, this is a terminal essentially so uh, um you read in from the terminal and then you can do things with it um and then as i mentioned basically uh, almost always we chop the new line of after we read in the std so this is the key things about the std and we also saw some examples i'm not going to um, quote the examples this is still um, talking about uh, the recap um and then finally the undef uh, value that we saw essentially um the undef is actually you can think of it as a value um uh, and that value is used um um value is used before it is given a value uh so before you give it a value the value is what is the undef essentially it is not equal to zero or it is not equal to uh, a null string so i think like i mean uh, that's one thing that you want to understand um only like for the number of things the undef is treated as zero so if if you have any kind of a dollar a plus dollar b where the dollar a is not defined then this will equal to zero for this operation essentially so um otherwise like i mean it's like not a zero but um when you perform an operation with that um value with that uh, variable then it is treated as zero and it is also treated as an empty string for string operations again this this rule does not hold good when you perform an operation and then um, std in returns uh, undef if there are there is no more data so now we will start uh, today's topic um, i think like i mean so this is uh, fairly clear uh, we will encounter this undef in uh, many programs uh, in the coming lectures i just wanted to again understand and uh, keep in mind how to use uh, that so today we will talk, start our topic um with uh, the discussions on array and uh, list data mostly we will be focusing on array today and uh, lists are basically we can we can uh, talk about it um, in the next one um again what is an array array is an ordered list of a scalar data in perl one good thing is like there is no declaration needed to um um define an array and uh, the size can be zero to any number mostly like this number is limited by the amount of memory that is that is allowed in the machine and we can easily increase the size of an array by just adding new elements to it so we will see like how we can define the array and how we will do adding addition of arrays uh, so the array literal is a list of comma separated values enclosed in parentheses so we will see like how to define an array literal 
and then there are some special operator one is this one this is the called the range operator it has two meanings depending on the context and we will see that so let us first look at some of the examples of an array so this is an array literal basically it's, uh, the two parentheses and then the values are enclosed within those parentheses and they are comma separated this is another array which has a, a string as one of the element and then there is a number as another element this is another array if you define this basically then the dollar a becomes the first element and 99 becomes the second element otherwise um, this becomes an undef or a zero in any operations get performed um, this one essentially like I mean it's just an arithmetic operator uh, so um, with an array and then this is an empty array of uh, array of uh, size equal to 0 and then we have the range operators 1 through 9 so um, actually here it will be like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 that is your array and in this one it is 1 2 3 4 5 10 and 20. You can think of the commas only. Um, so now, what will this array be essentially? So again, here it's uh, um, we will we'll talk about the rules as to how to do how you know this array is defined. Um, but essentially, like I mean, it will be like just one, two, three, four, five, and even for this one, it is one, two, three, four, five, because it only takes the the integer from the first and increments one at a time until it reaches the final number um, so these will be ignored this will be ignored this will be ignored this all will be ignored so uh, let us look at the two uh, contexts uh, that I mentioned uh, for the uh, the range operator so the first one is the list context which is pretty much what is defined in here like all these uh, four examples define the list context of the array in the list context it returns the list of values counting up by ones from the left value to the right value so the if the left value is greater than the right value then it returns an empty list so that is another key thing that to note um so, but uh, in the modern implementation, so like I mean, uh, if you look at some of the Perl book, uh, the older Perl books, you will see like this one caveat uh, written in that where if you use this kind of a number, like one dot dot one underscore uh, one zero 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 one zero zero zero, then um, it can burn a lot of memory because it creates an array for you, a temporary array for you. But uh, this temporary array is no longer created in the newer implementation of Perl. So this um, statement, even though it is not a very good use, it's 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 a it's a safe statement. It's not a um, it's, it won't cause any issues uh, uh, in this statement. The second um, context uh, that I meant to mention is the scalar context. In in scalar context, the operator dot dot actually returns a boolean value. So it is like a flip flop. It uh, emulates the long range uh, operator of uh, said arc and other editors. Um, this is uh, the the line range operator is also known as the, the comma operator. So um, each of the dot dot operator maintains its own boolean states, even across calls to subroutine that contains it. Um, so the way it works is it is false as long as the left operand is false once the left operand becomes true then the range operator stays true until the right operand is true after which the range operator becomes false again it does not become false till the next time the range operator is evaluated um, so it can test the right operator uh, operand um, and uh, become false on the same evaluation um, and it becomes true but it still retains the true um, at least once 
so these are all like I mean big set of rules um, um, let us see like I mean an example because that pretty much uh, gives us uh, how this uh, uh, command works. So here is a simple um, scalar context um, essentially where um, um, <coughs> um, we use this number here 101 dot dot 200 print. So the way to interpret this um, command is essentially it prints the 200 to the second hundred lines um, essentially so basically it prints from line number 101 to um, uh, 200 but it is the short for these conditions basically like dollar dot equal to equal to 101 and dollar dot equal to equal to 200 print so the question is like I mean so this is another uh, um, dollar variable uh, we saw like two of them before and now this is the third one which is the dollar dot operator um, so the dollar dot essentially it is the it is the shorthand for input line number So essentially like I mean what we are saying here is um, this 101 is actually the line numbers so the, if the line number is equal to 101 all the way to line number equal to 200 print this so here actually like I mean this corresponds to the equality operator but um, the, there, are, there are other ways of using um, the dot dot operator as well. So in the scalar context, so you can test multiple conditions and then come up with these answers for that. So now let's talk about the array variables. Um, so we saw like the, say the scalar variables actually they start with the, the dollar. Um, the array variables are they start with the ampersand or at so since uh, they have different prefix compared to a scalar variable we can have the same name uh, but um, you can you can treat them as two different variables for example the ampersand a and dollar a are actually like two different variables, so you can use them uh, interchangeably, or you can you can even, I mean, you can each will have its own value, so it's not dependent on one value or the other. Okay, so that is one thing. And the array assignment essentially, where arrays can be assigned by using the assignment operator, the value of the assignment is the entire array. So how do we use um, this? So here are some examples first of all declaration of an array we know that this is the way to declare an array and then we assign a variable which is the ampersand a and here this is an string array uh, containing colors the names of colors so at color is um, red white and blue and at b equal to 1 this is also a uh, interesting array containing just one element. Uh, here is another one dollar C is basically um, 0 at A and 9 so this can be you can replace this here so that it becomes like 0 1 2 3 9 and then the same thing the gray is actually updated towards the end to the at color array and you can see that actually it is used uh, both places. And this is a multi assignment case where actually like both dollar I mean at E and at B are assigned same as color. So here uh, so one more clarification here which is um, 
the one I mentioned basically is a single element array so it's basically it will be promoted to like uh, with the parenthesis and so that it will be um, the um, it will be an array type so here the same thing like 0 1 2 3 9 and then here again the gray is added to the end and then uh, this one is a um, both dollar D and dollar E are assigned the same color as the variable. So the array literal essentially like we saw this uh, briefly essentially like I mean the literal contains only the only variable references it does not have any expressions or uh, constants the array, array literal can be just used as a variable it can be used on the left hand side of the assignment. So let us see some array literals so here um, dollar a dollar b dollar c equals 1 2 3 so what this means is um, essentially like the dollar a gets 1 b gets 2 and c gets 3 so let us define here and then the second um, command is essentially like dollar a dollar b is equal to dollar b dollar a even though you can see that actually like they are the same this is what is called a swap. So we just swap the elements so now the dollar a becomes 2 and dollar b becomes 1. So now let us look at that uh, the first dollar first and the dollar rest is dollar a dollar b dollar c and 99. So the first is whatever will be the first and that gets assigned to the dollar first. So the first is in this array it is 1 so it gets 1 and then the rest is dollar $B, $C and 99 which is 2, 3 and 99. So here again like I mean we are not uh, doing the swap this is uh, before the swap um, so that is why like I mean it is uh, still this values are 1, 2, 3 and 99. If it is applied after this statement, then this will be like um, so two will be assigned to first, and then uh, one, three, ninety-nine will be applied to the second, all the rest. Now you can also have an array followed by a scalar variable inside the assignment. So in this case, like a dollar all and dollar empty, um, essentially. Um, the dollar all contains the dollar uh, the ampersand rest so or sorry the ampersand all contains all of the elements from ampersand rest which is in this case uh, it will be like 2 3 and 99 and then the empty is essentially like I mean it, it returns this undead so it, it has nothing in it and uh, it just returns the undead as the, the next level. So. Um, I hope like uh, again this uh, these examples illustrate how the array structure uh, array literal can be used uh, so um, this will be again used in many many uh, programs essentially uh, used to collect information uh, and then also like disseminate uh, that information to the other sections of the program. So now um, another question is how do you estimate or how do you determine the length of an array the, the length of an array is determined by a scalar variable and um, if the array variable is assigned to a scalar variable the number um, assigned is the length of that array. So um, what does that mean? So you can just say basically okay dollar a equal to dollar or at a so in this statement essentially like I mean whatever the number of elements in at a is assigned to uh, dollar a actually it is slightly bit more complicated than that um, uh, essentially so 
um, this one now it takes the number uh, the thing so there is also a special variable which is um, dollar uh, hash array um, this is essentially like stores the the upper bound of the index of in the array what that means is the bound the, the index of the last element of the array is stored in this uh, variable. So for example in this case it will be like the dollar hash a will hold the, the index of the, the, the last element. Um, so um, typically the array goes from 0 to the, the index of last element. Uh, Last index. So um, usually we want to add one to the last index to get the number of arrays because the, it starts with zero. So um, so uh, that's the reason why, like I mean, when we assign the value size, so uh, I mean um, the or the array, the whole array to the dollar size, the value of size is actually. It's, uh, dollar hash array plus one um, so this one denotes this one that is needed to represent the, the zero element and then the this will be the basically the um, index of the last element in the array so some examples here um, so here basically the ampersand a is one two and three so now when we print um, the just the whole array basically it prints one two three then it prints this um, um, square brackets also because they are marked as literals here now we want to print the size and can you take a guess so the size is actually three because uh, that's what uh, we got. And then uh, the next one we are doing essentially um, uh, we are just adding additional one more element uh, which is last to the array and then we are printing out the that essentially with a square bracket beginning and the end so now we get this and then finally we have this size equal to um, ampersand a which it should now denote size as four. Because you have added one more element to the array. So now the element array access itself, we kind of figured out that we know we can use it with the subscript operator, which is a square bracket, and then use the dollar for the subscript variable. Um, the array subscripts typically starts at zero. We already saw that in this slide that. Um, when we ask for size is three, but um, essentially it's uh, denoted as this one, two, and three. So essentially, like I mean, um, it's that dollar pound or dollar hash uh, array plus one. So And if an array index is outside the boundary, the value is uh, undefined. So this is one of the key concepts of why we wanted to uh, understand what undef stands for in the very beginning. Now there are some examples. So the ampersand color is uh, red, white, and blue, and dollar x is um, dollar color zero. Um, so you can say what this has and now the dollar color 2 is changed to yellow. So now um, and then here there are some more um, some more ways of accessing the array. Um, so here actually like I mean so one thing to note is like I mean so this color 0 means like so dollar x is equal to red actually yeah and then here color 2 is yellow 
that means that color 2 is uh, the last element of the array which is blue and then that is replaced by yellow and here again like uh, so this is more like a string array uh, this one known as string or string array now let us look at these examples here um, the array is declared as a numerical array which is 0 1 2 3 and then we increment the uh, third element by, by 1 so that means that the 3 is becoming 4 and then we write out uh, so here we are doing like uh, a1 a2 is same as a2 a3 that means that we are swapping it so we actually have the array as 1 0 sorry 0 1 2 4 and then now we are swapping the first and the second with the second and the third so this means this will become like 1 1 uh, or 1 2 2 4 and then if we print dollar uh, a um, ampersand a minus 1 then it prints number 4 which is the last element of the array that is because dollar uh, a denotes the, the current value of the, the um, uh, the current array essentially and then uh, the current array is line number and then uh, ampersand a minus uh, ampersand a itself is um, the number of elements of the array which is 4 um, and then uh, we minus 1 out of that so this becomes dollar uh, a 3 which is essentially um, it goes and finds out the last element and then prints out so the answer will be 4. So now we introduce another concept uh, called a slice essentially um, a slice is a shorthand representation to denote uh, multiple elements of an array um, so in this uh, uh, small example uh, ampersand a 1 3 and 5. Uh, it's essentially to the same as dollar a one um, dollar a three and dollar a five. The indices of the uh, the slice uh, does not have to be increasing. For example, ampersand a one zero five is perfectly a legal one. And also, it need not be different. It can be like just uh, one, 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 which is essentially says that okay, the first element of all the the, the um, my file I want or my array, I need uh, the same value to be set three times. So if you look at uh, here, essentially let's like say zero, so it will come in, come in as uh, actually much than that. So this is the zeroth element. This is the first element. So it will start printing just one one one. Okay. So here are some more examples. Essentially, so um, uh, dollar a is zero one two three four five. That's here, which is the actual array. And then uh, we replace one three and five, which is one three and five. Uh, we assign the two. I mean, actually, like sorry, one. Let me start again. So one, three, and five will be replaced by zero, two, and four. So. Um, Essentially, like I mean, so it has become zero, zero, two, two, four, four as the as the main um, values of this array. And then when you print out four, two, and zero, that is um, goes there. Zero, one, two, three, four. It prints out four. Uh, zero, one, two, and then it prints out two. Four, two, zero. But so that's what is denoted here. 
and then finally we ask it to print dollar a3 and at a3 so um, can you see the difference essentially and then uh, you can see how that will be printed out uh, in this case both of them are the same so it prints out 2 and 2 uh, dollar a3 is the same as here and dollar I mean ampersand a2 is also the same. So one other uh, key thing to note about the slices and array itself can be used as an index of a slice. So here example is like dollar name and it has the index of uh, dollar even which is also another array. So here is another example dollar A is defined as 0 1 2 3 4 5 and B is actually like just one shift uh, to the left which is 1 2 3 4 5 and then then is 0. Um, so when we print the dollar ampersand A we get 0 1 2 3 4 5 and then we say print A and then in parenthesis is dollar B so what will you get pretty much the same essentially like so um, it will be used the, the B as the index so you get the same, um, same results. Now what if like you use B once again and then try to um, print that essentially so now it is almost as if like I mean it is a shifter so it is shifting to the left so or essentially to the right so the the two actually like goes um, I mean actually the one goes to the, toward the end and then you get two three four five zero one and then similarly like I mean you can actually increase this uh, and B and you can make it more and more as a shift register. So now the next topic is um, how to build array as a stack essentially. Um, so a stack is um, you can think of um, like a um, like a jar of uh, say um, um, biscuits essentially. Uh, so the elements that you insert first goes to all the way to the bottom. And then uh, basically like when you are popping essentially like I mean it only pops from the top um, so all the elements in order to access the last element or the first element that you pushed in you have to element all, you have to access all the elements before it pop out all of them and then only you can take the, 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 uh, the last one. This uh, particular kind of arrangement is also known as L I F O I think this is uh, quite familiar to many of you which is last in first out. So how do we implement um, this kind of uh, complex data structure so one thing to notice uh, when we talk about stacks the stack is still aligned at the lower end of the array as the index 0. Um, this is one key thing uh, why we uh, can easily access um, essentially like I mean and then if it is not aligned then the data can get corrupted. So um, what we do is essentially like we can push a list with the new element so at list is the, the, the variable that holds all the value. So. Um, so this is one way to do it is basically um, at list and then the new element use the push command this uh, appends the element at the end of the, the array. So um, you have like uh, one to say five and then when your turn comes basically that gets added as uh, or six at the end. So somebody has to pretty much like do memory management all the time to understand what is going on. Um, the other main thing is um, um, the pop essentially the pop function functionality is shown here um, which is um, basically pop the list and then assign the top one to the dollar top 
So you can think of it like this basically. So when you this is for push. And this is zero, one, two, and then vice and continues on. For the pop. You have this array zero one two three, and then essentially the way to pop the thing is basically you find a variable, and then this variable holds elements from the top. So, so first uh, you need to clear the the third element before you can um, do the second element before you can do the first one so I think like I mean that is pretty much uh, this topic now shall we go into the uh, so before we go into it uh, essentially let us do some examples again uh, so here is an example where uh, the array is defined as uh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 uh, and then we have a new scalar dollar new which is equal to 99 and then we say basically push this dollar new into the array A. So what that means is essentially that this is pushed towards the end. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 with 99 at the end. Now if you push uh, two uh, letters, uh, six and nine, six and seven. So now already this changed to 99. So when we pushed six and seven, it became six and seven. Now let us look at the continue with the same example and into the uh, pop section we assign dollar top to pop ampersand A. So when we try to print ampersand A it gives like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 99 and then 6 and then um, we define another uh, um, array variable called the dollar B then it is assigned to 1 2 and 3 and then uh, we do a push dollar B I mean ampersand B to ampersand B that means that you concatenate this uh, at least two times so um, we get 1 2 3 1 2 3 now if we push another array 7 8 9 that array will be like all these constructs are lost and then there is uh, basically it has a long array, longer array now 150, 153 and 79. So let us see some examples. So, so here we have a declaration where um, ampersand A uh, is 0, 1, 2, 3, and then uh, dollar A we defined it as uh, 99, and then uh, Essentially, like I mean, so um, it uh, the result of this uh, statement is zero, one, two, and this, and then ninety nine. So now the dollar top. Is defined as uh, we want to pop uh, pop stuff from uh, ampersand A, and then um, so that was successfully done, and then uh, we say basically okay, print the pop to the top, um, and that prints out this information one two zero one two, and then undefined, and then top equal to pop, and then pop stop. This will print out uh, zero, one, and two. Okay, so um, we will also like uh, go through the lecture for shift and unshift. Um, so the shift and unshift is very similar to the pop up. Um, we say basically the um, this is the beginning of the array, basically. So this is the beginning. This is the end. Essentially, like I mean, now you have a larger partition here, and uh, you basically like memory 
they are going away essentially like I mean, then uh, contractors um, um, so in this one essentially the um, so um, the way this will work will be basically the each element is pushed into the array so whereas in a shift actually uh, so you can think of this as um, um, the so the push operation essentially like I mean pushes the existing elements down and pushes at the front so this is the beginning and this is the end so everything is pushed to the end so and then the pop is uh, it is back uh, the same way whereas the shift operation essentially um, it it is on the lower end of the array essentially like I mean the, so um, the index of that will be uh, the new index essentially uh, we will see some examples here so the array is defined as 9901123 and then we shift uh, uh, the array and then the result is essentially like 0123 because now this 99 essentially goes into the B essentially so um, dollar B becomes 99 and then the array stays uh, the array has uh, 0 1 2 3 and then when we say like unshift that particular element then it is back basically like it is pushed into the array and then it is uh, brought back and then if you say like unshift 4 and 5 so those 4 and 5 are added at the beginning of the array, so it is four five nine 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 zero one two three. Um, some more examples on the shift. Um, so if you say like unshift uh, dollar tag, the tag or the tag is defined as last, and then that gets added as the, the as the first element of the array. And then if we do an x um, dollar x equal to shift ampersand a then the last gets assigned to the shift uh, assigned to the x and then the array becomes just uh, 4 5 99 0 1 2 3. Um, so uh, I think I am going to stop at this point uh, we will talk about the rivers uh, the uh, sort and those type of functions in the next course. Um, and again we are, we are still talking about the arrays themselves basically so arrays are a huge uh, uh, data structure and it is used everywhere and in everyday life um, but uh, we have like very little um, information about uh, this uh, functionality and that is one thing that we covered today uh, I hope uh, this is uh, quite useful. Um, so. Um, what we talked about I'm just taking you back uh, so we we started our discussion with an array we understood how to declare an array um, and also like we saw how operations can be performed on an array we understood how to um, get the length of the array and so that we can act upon it. Um, we can you do other things with the length. Um, then we also went through uh, some of the ways of creating an array. Um, um, creating an array, and then uh, how to use uh, stacks and uh, um, the shift registers or shifters basically. So um, I think that is all uh, for today um, we will actually continue from this point in the next lecture uh, until then uh, thanks thanks for listening um, thank you very much. <laughs>